Hi everyone, it's TTL back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look and it is a quick look because this is a preview of the ROG Rampage 6 Extreme Omega but if you're interested in the Threadripper version there is another video on the channel of the ROG Zenith Extreme Alpha as well lots of Latin words in these but they are the monstrous top end versions <laughs> Okay, so a quick deep dive into, a quick deep dive, that makes no sense. Anyway, we're gonna start with a quick look inside the box. You get your welcome to ROG, a coaster, and your normal written manual inside. So you've got something physical that you can look at if you have any problems uh, and it stops your system from working. You get the stickers as you might be used to. Um, you get all of your M.2 screws and all of the little stuff like that. Some people still do ask me why you don't get motherboard screws with a motherboard. They come with the case because the threads can be different. Uh, but your drivers do finally come on a USB stick. So you get a little USB stick in this tiny little wallet with the drivers on. But just remember that uh, they are the launch drivers. So uh, it's actually good practice when you first build your rig, no matter when you've done it or if you're redoing Windows or anything like that, go and get the latest drivers from the Asus website. It's really easy to find. Find your board, hit the support button, select your operating system, and then you can download all the latest ones there. Other things that you get inside the box, you get uh, three thermal probes. So you can, if I put it there you go, you can see that it's a tiny little thermal probe. And when we look around the board, you'll see where they plug in in a minute. You get a couple of RGB extenders, one I dropped, uh, which is your normal four pin RGB, and then you get an, uh, an addressable RGB as well. You do get your Wi-Fi aerial for the back, which isn't magnetic, doesn't come with any stickers, and it's an incredibly lazy thing from Asus, considering the price of these boards, or at least when you consider that these are above the original, uh, this is above the original Rampage, um, and it's not magnetic, and it doesn't come with any stickers for aluminium cases, or uh, people that are running tempered glass think this is a bit of a cop-out, lazy, don't really like that. Then again, I don't really like Wi-Fi on a mega gaming rig like this anyway. But you also get uh, this, which is an external uh, fan hub, which you need to plug in via the Asus node header, and you get this extension here. But the problem is, is that extension's massive, and then this little connector isn't that long. But then again, it's for a six-pin PCI Express. So we're not too fussed about the length of this, but having the condiment cables is a bit lazy. Uh, the other thing is you get three RGB headers around here, but there's only one addressable RGB on the actual motherboard itself. So it's one at the bottom, there's none anywhere else. There's no ad extra addressable RGB on here. So if you buy one of the Asus power supplies, so you've obviously got the Thor power supplies, they need an addressable RGB feed. That means you've got no other addressable RGB feed available with this board. Now I know a lot of people don't care about RGB, but for a board that price it should have had two addressable RGBs. So rant over, you get the node headers here, you get some fan headers around the outside as well. You've also got uh, three thermal probe headers on this as well should you want to use it. This is your extra uh, M.2 holder, it's called the DIM2. So it looks like a memory module, it's all black, but it does hold two M.2s. So there you go, you can see the headers there. It does hold two of them. So that's all good in the hood, which you can put down the side. I will show you other M.2s on the board as well. You get six in total plain black plastic SATA cables. Three of them are straight on both ends, three of them have a 90 degree on one end and a straight on the other, but you do also get a pair of ever so slightly braided, it's a really nice soft braid, and considering they come in the box, they're actually pretty decent quality. You get one uh, straight and one 90 degree on this as well, so they're straight on both ends, one straight on one end, 90 degree on the other end, you can use them as you see fit. E80X, which means it's just a little bit wider. Uh, that does mean that a lot of case companies don't say that they'll fit E80X, but normally all that happens is it just overhangs the grommets to the side of the board a little bit. So it's going to be case dependent, but you'll be amazed they fit in a lot uh, more cases than you may think. Now, with the Rampage, the difference between this and the last one, or the biggest, hugest difference, because they've done it with this and the uh, Zenith, 
is all the extra VRMs at the top. Now, what they've done is slightly different. So you've got uh, 16 chokes and uh, power phases at the top, but you only have uh, eight actual PWMs because what happens is it then goes uh, from the PWM, it's then hardwired out into the actual MOSFETs themselves. So it hasn't actually got a doubler but it does, um, uh, essentially what it does is it stops the delay or the lag or the latency that you can get with the delayer being able to switch. So it's a much faster way. And although there are, like I said, only um, eight actual PWMs to start with, there are still 16 MOSFETs. And the MOSFETs is uh, where the actual power phases themselves. So it's, we have a, it's a, uh, some people are going to argue it's good, some people are not. One of the things I have seen that I don't mind saying is because there are fans in the uh, heat sink at the top, but I've not seen them turn on yet. So whatever they're doing, as far as that's concerned, even with monstrous load, they're doing a pretty good job. And that's the reason why I'm spending a little bit more time going in and uh, doing extra tests. I'm actually testing two completely separate CPUs. So when you do see the main review, you're going to see a 7900X, and then you're also going to see the 7980XE in there as well. Both is manual overclocked, battering the hell out of the PWMs. Uh, so we'll see how we get on. So you have the two eight pins at the very, very top of the board. And then when you move slightly further down, down this side, you can see the uh, actual CPU fan headers. Coming down a little bit, you've got a couple of uh, dip switches here for uh, LN2 mode and slow mode. You've also got your single RGB header on the top of the motherboard, and that's the only RGB header that you do get on the top of the board. You get the 24-pin power connector, and then you've also got down here some voltage points, so you can get some very, very accurate voltages from those points with a multimeter at home, uh, and you shouldn't really be able to short things out. So as long as you're careful with your earth, you'll, you should be fine. Then uh, slightly further down, you've got your external USB 3.1 Gen 2 and then another fan header. And that one there is a high amp fan header as well. So that will actually be set up to run at 100%, but that one you can change. But that is for a very uh, high speed fan. Like I said, it's a high amp fan, something that's going to draw a lot of power. Horizontal external USB 3, then you've got six SATA headers and you also get a U.2 header at the bottom where it's an Intel baseboard. Nice zoom in error, uh, area down in on the bottom right hand side. So the two little water pins up here, or the two little white pins I should say, they're actually your water temperature headers. For those of you that might be running uh, dedicated water cooling and you have thermal sensors plumbed in. You can use the an IROC key if you're going to run anything like that, again, because it's an Intel board. Then you've got some more dip switches here. This is a water pump RPM sensor. You've got another fan sensor there, but there's two, uh, another, sorry, got a fan header. Then you've also got another water pump header here and another fan header here. This is a BIOS switch button because there are two BIOSes on the board, which can be handy if you end up with a bad flash or something like that. This is your Asus node, and then you've got your RGB here, and then the only addressable RGB just above it. If we swing round, got another USB 3, two USB 2s, and you get a lot more switches down here. So you've got your safe boot and your retry button, your reset switch, and then your start button. Now, the just to the left of the start button, you have a Molex header. You don't need to worry about plugging that Molex header for the majority of end users. You've got your Supreme FX up here, so you can see the gold Japanese capacitors specialized for uh, audio. And then when we zoom out a little bit, you do get a chance to see this panel, which there are four screws for that you can remove. So on the back of the plate, once you've removed the screws, you can see that you've got two thermal pads, one for a normal 80 millimeter long M.2, or an MVME, and then you've got another one for 110 millimeter long, because that's the difference between these. The top one is for up to 110 millimeters long, the bottom one only fits uh, up to an 80, but you do get two underneath, and don't forget you also get another two M.2s that you can put up in that DIM.2 port. So you can put a total 
four M.2s on the board if you would like. There is another fan header just nestling away there, just underneath the monstrous I.O. So you get an idea where it is. It's a good idea for a back panel fan or anything like that. One thing I will say though is a lot of people get used to them being up here because this is actually where I prefer to wire my rear panel fans in because I, I change where the, the wire would come out of the fan to make things tidy. And there's none up here, but that's mainly because of the size of the heat sink. And it's massive because obviously there's 16 phases along the top. And the heat sink, they've actually moved the memory down a little bit so that they can do that. So there is uh, no room up there. There's actually a back plate on the board as well. You can see the extra heat sink around the back and the strengthening brace as well. Helps keep the board rigid on the back of the board. And then there's also the... extra back plate and it does help with rigidity as well uh, you might need to kind of think you can see with the where the motherboard standoffs will go through but can, it might be an issue for some of the other boards what this also does is it hides the strip lighting down the side which i'll show you in a minute round to the rear io and you just here this is the bias flashback button and essentially if you have a usb stick you bang a uh, bios now you can download the latest one from the aces website and if you do this, I would suggest that you do do that as well. Get the very latest one that you can. Put the BIOS file in the um, root of your USB stick. It will come as a RAR file. You need to make sure that you actually get the, the, very, the, the actual file itself. Not in a folder, the actual file itself. Then what you need to do, if you're going to use BIOS flashback, is rename it RE, hang on, RE, R6. So it's Rampage 6 Extreme Alpha. So it's R6EO. It's a mouthful. But once you've renamed it to that, what you can then do is press and hold the BIOS flashback button. And what will happen is this will start to flash. If you've renamed it properly and it is in the root of the um, uh, USB, where I mean it's literally when you first open the USB, it's just there, not in any folders or anything, then uh, it will start to flash and eventually it will start to flash faster. Now, once it's finished its job, it will just go off. But if the light stays on and just goes solid blue, then it's not worked. So it's, that's just a really quick guide for BIOS flashback. And what BIOS flashback is, is a much lower level version of updating your BIOS. If you bulk BIOS as well, so maybe you've had a bad flash or you had a power cut or something like this, this way can actually save your bacon. Uh, you've got your two um, wireless things here, BIOS clear here, lots of connectivity. You've also got some uh, USB 3 Gen 2 going on with a C and an A, lots of normal USB 3 going on. You've got your uh, audio here, which is quite handy. Yes, it does have gold headers, so you can't really see what each one's for unless you look they light up as well, which is kind of handy. Not only uh, is that kind of handy because then you can see what's going on, but then if you're doing it in the dark, you can also see it and you know where to go. Um, but it may annoy some people because obviously where they do light up, they're gonna leave nice little marks on your walls if they're doing it. But talking about lighting, now I have a cable that allows me to put the board into a demo mode, which means I can light the board up without actually having a power supply or anything, well, a main power supply, and it's actually not you can see I've not got a CPU cooler or anything on the board, it's not even actually turned on. But you can see your I.O. panel here, I.O. panel, it's an OLED little panel there, LCD panel. So uh, that you can put um, uh, animations like this or CPU temperature and all that sort of stuff. Although I am going to keep saying it until ACES fix it. It's still not a proper CPU temperature, it's a socket temp. Please, please sort it out so it's proper because then your um, uh, AIO coolers will work better as well. Anyway, you've got some more RGB going on down here with the eye, right down there with the removable panel is. You can also see that the reset and the start button light up white, but there is also some more lighting going on down the side of the board itself. And it's only because I've got my cable in the way. There you go, it goes all the way down the side of the board. Now, obviously, you can set up animations for it. There are special effects in the software. You can turn it off completely as well. So it should please everyone. I would probably end up having it on white or red 
obviously. But anyway, I will be back with a review. It won't be next week. It's going to be at least the week after because we've got a few launches next week. But I will be back with it as quickly as I possibly can do. I've just got a little bit more deep diving I want to do and uh, give it some proper abuse to try and get those uh, VRMs to overheat or even get those fans to spin because I haven't been able to yet. I think that should give you a little bit of a hint into how well it works. But please let me know your thoughts underneath. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, you can subscribe and I'd love to hear you comment. Have a look on the OC3D website as well because we've got loads more pictures and stuff of this all over there. But for now at least, this is the tiniest one. Out.